desire. Uh, I like my cars like the freestyles off the top. Ooh. Yeah. They gon' like it, they gon' love it. We don't need no tasters. They gon' take it in off the drop. Yeah. The packaging, yeah, that's right too. Player circle, yeah, that's right too. Yeah. Tell me who I gotta write this check to for them to just to see through and see us too. As a matter of fact, we don't need you to open the door. We gon' knock on it anyway. Give us the key, we coming through it anyway. Yeah, threw the pennies away. Now we counting big stocks, threw the minis away. Now we got a couple with us, threw the minis away. Uh, like a thick bitch, keep the minis away. Yeah, uh, they say I'm a minion, you say. It's just the way I was raised, it's my environment. Let me blame it on my father not being around. Fuck that. Because guess what? I'm a father now. I'm a man now. Standing up, standing tall, standing strong now. Yeah. Yeah. This a dog pound. Uh. Fuck a bark, nigga. Get bit with a pause, nigga. Hey. Gotta say that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that last line was hilarious. It was crazy. Yeah. That's that wild. Cool. But it's all good. Why I got the small petite girls that all love the mm-hmm. big body caprice. I said, all my small bitches love a big body. Niece. I said, mm-hmm. huh, clean it up, get it neat. All I want is some teens on repeat. All I want is that throw it on repeat. Give me a throw it on repeat. Yeah. When them taxes going red, god damn. Uh, I know I'm feeling for my young one. Uh, too young for me though. Uh, I told the truth, I could never marry you though. You got too much life in front of you. I'm just an old nigga in front of you. Uh, and you just like being up under me. Yeah. And that's cool, you gotta go on and live your life on, on and on. Uh, yeah, be the mature ones that be the most toxic though. God damn, I love them anyway though, cause they'll teach you with three, four, five things though. Yeah. Gotta say Even that. though it seemed like it's cutthroat. Yeah. Mm. I know the more we argue, we learn more about each other though. You gotta say that. Who the fuck is such and such? I go by the name of the world famous DJ such and such. I got my nigga no name here. I got my nigga Zay here. Yeah. Gotta say that. Welcome all to the living testimony of some real player shit and some things not so player, but that's why we're here. A safe place for men to congregate and say how we feel. Not always wrong, but who's to say we're wrong? Put down ye stones and judge ye not. Women, you're always welcome, and we adore you. And most of what we talk about may be something about you. So feel free to tune in, chime in, zell in, whatever it is. We'll take it. We accept it. Uh, but please come as you are. Uh, but if you're just plain no toxic, we do reserve the right to rebuke you. Goodbye. And remember, brethren and sisters, these streets are really on demon time. I don't say that shit. And, well, we're just trying to lessen that temptation a little bit so you don't get played by a little... Grab your favorite communion juice, popcorn, candy, weed, whatever you got, and join us in the player circle. We got G in the circle. Downtown G Brown, a.k.a. DJ such and such, a.k.a. Mr. Gotta Say That, a.k.a. Shout out to the unit, a.k.a. Stay hydrated, niggas. Mm-hmm. We got no name J in the circle. Chew. Yo, I'm Infinitely Zay, and this is the player circle Bible study class. Class is now in session. And just know when the camera's cut and we say that's it, we still going to be on some player shit. Got to say that, nigga. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, June 24th, 2024, 24-24. Shout out to uh, Mamba. Shout out to the West Coast. Oh. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Bay Area. Sometimes you got to pop out. Shout out to Napa Valley. 
Shout out to Napa. Shout out to Wine. <laughs> nigga. Shout out to Wine. Shout out to uh, San Diego. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, shit. Man, shout out to all y'all. Even Seattle up there on the West Coast. <laughs> Washington State, what's up? Uh, welcome back to another episode, man. We glad that y'all came to vibe with us. Maybe you in your car, you in your kitchen. You know, maybe you cooking for the kids. Maybe the kids getting on your nerves. Maybe you ain't got no kids. Maybe you at it at odds with your baby mama, baby daddy. Whatever it is, we just hope you here to have some fun with us and kick it with us. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be on a whole bunch of hilarious shit because we just, we really funny. We think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, I think G funny. I think no, no funny. And I, I, I'm a little funny. So funny too, yeah. thanks, bro. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I say that. But how y'all doing, man? How y'all vibing today? How was y'all week? I ain't seen y'all in seven days on thing, right? About seven days. Sometimes I be seeing y'all niggas during the yeah. week. But, you yeah, know. I'm good. Yeah. The week and the books. Get to the bread. Let's go. That's I it. Died. I was dehydrated. Oh, man. Tell us about it. You know, I ain't go to the hospital because I ain't no bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, y'all. Hey, go to the hospital. <laughs> Don't let your niggas talk you out of going to the hospital. <laughs> We here, we support going to the hospital, bro. It ain't even a nigga talk you out of it. It's you thinking about damn nigga. Yeah, like, right. Whole time they like, go, bro. For? <laughs> ain't drinking enough water. <laughs> you can hear somebody now. Goofy ass. Nigga. Right. Water okay. free, nigga. Uh, what's up, no name? What's good? What's good? What's good? Nah, I'm chilling, man. Another day, another dollar. Another day, another dollar. Yeah. We got some young bulls in the building. What's good? Yeah. Just say something. Just say, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it is. They in here on the phone with the hoes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I'm just playing. They some <laughs> nice, upstanding young gentlemen. But, uh, hey, it's another day at the player. We got a new segment today. How you That's doing, one. Man? Okay. Oh, I'm doing good. I'm sorry. Thanks, brother. Got the bodies cast out today. Oh, man, talk to me. All right, AP, let's go, my nigga. Let's go. Thanks. Shout out to the bodies. Yeah. Big shiny. Big shiny head. Pause. Man, shout out to the shorties with the baldies. You already know. Mm, I like me a little bald. I'm about to say shout out to a little. Here we go. A little. <laughs> Here we go. A little fours too. I hey, this shit ain't go. Yeah, how you doing, Zay? All right, what the hell is that? I'm back outside, yeah. nigga. Fuck out, Zay doing. <laughs> Zay, you can, okay, good. Hey, uh, what the hell is that? <laughs> One, two hoes. <laughs> Man, shout out to, uh, hey, speaking of hoes, um, mm. I ain't seen a lot of sundresses lately. Y'all bruh, seen a lot of sundresses? I was just talking to a nigga about that, bro. What you say? Like, what, what you seeing? It's That's a conspiracy, bro. We ain't seen no no cheeks moving in the sundress. Not in the sundresses. Bro. They'll wear them tight ass uh, yoga shorts. They, they, them. You know them, what I'm saying? That's the new sundress. Shorts. Yeah, the onesies. Them little, the little onesies they be wearing. Yoga pants. No. The tight onesies. Yeah, nah. You know what I'm saying? That. That's what I'm saying. Bring sundresses back. That's our hey, new campaign. Out, <laughs> That's a new back. t-shirt, bro. That's our new t-shirt. Bring, bro. Shit Bring sundresses back. Sundress awareness month. Man, you hear me? Because it is another month. Mm-hmm. Ladies, what, what's that month, bro? Ladies, DM us y'all pictures and y'all sundresses. Bro. Oh. We're going to have a sundress challenge. Make sure you cut this part out, uh, AI. We appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah, let's wait. We gotta Sunday. make make more make some movement so the AI can catch this part. Of the, hey, we Sunday want this part. Cut, cut. We going the baddest the baddest sundress baddie get a. We got the new merch coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Like, get a t- free T-shirt. Get a free T-shirt. Get a free How about t-shirt. that? You go on there. You choose your T-shirt. We get it to you for free. Sometimes you gotta pop out and show niggas. <laughs> Talk that shit. Shout out to K Dot, right? Nah. King, king of king of rap right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mm-mm-mm. Y'all can talk about that. I ain't got nothing to say. But anyways, where them sundresses go? Let's go back to that. I need to really know. Hey, shout know. out to Kendrick sundresses. Yeah, Even when we was at the uh, the festival, shit. That's what I'm saying. I ain't seen him. Damn. I see a bunch of big ass blue jeans, nigga. That's. <laughs> I'm pull my mic away. What's <laughs> Hold on, bro. That was my next mother. We be in assimilation, bro. Cause that was literally. My next day, I was like, man, they be wearing them big ass pants now. Yeah. They probably like y'all some perverts, anyways. Look at ya, fiending for the sundresses. Of course, some of them motherfuckers was poking in there. Yeah. Nah, nah, them, them the jeans, jeans do go they, too, they poke oh, you. Man. But I, you know, I'm a thigh butt nigga. Like, I like thigh butt. A thigh like, butt. Yeah, I like thigh butt. Like I like the ratio of how the butt go into the thigh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Only way you're going to see that is, you know what I mean? Because you can hide, you can have a butt in them thick ass jeans, but then your thigh be super thick too. But you ain't going to tell because the motherfucker's baggy. So all you see is the booty. 
take the motherfuckers off. It's like the booty is one whole leg. <laughs> I did mm-hmm. see a bitch down there like that. Matter of fact, who <laughs> I hey, you gotta put fifty dollars in the bitch bucket, bro. Oh. <laughs> Especially in that way you just uh, did. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Sounds about right. Hey, G made his own shit up, bro. <laughs> I got my own rules. Nah, shout out to the unit though. We, yeah. our, we gonna make our rules up. Mm-hmm. Get it in. Make shout our commandments. They keep saying the unit. What's the unit? Yeah, what's the unit? Go oh, ahead. Yeah. It's a little group I'm a part of. Oh, this nigga joined uh, motherfucker sixty nine God. Yeah, it's a group <laughs> part of it. Based in friendship and. Mm. Community. Mm. That's fire. Trust. That is fire. That's fire. That's fire. Yeah, I'll have more details later. I know, that's right. Let's see how that the unit.com? That's how we get fire, there. Yeah. The Let's nah, go, nigga. Nah, it's private. Well, shout out shout out to all the units then, nigga. Uh, unit. Yeah. But anyways, back to what I was saying again, the nigga. Sun dresses, <laughs> bro. They need to come back. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Let me not be so aggressive. <laughs> We like sundresses. Grown men like sundresses. I ain't gonna hold you, man. Them things be yeah. they be looking good, smelling good. So go up to the rainbow and the uh, plaza, get you a couple of them bitches. Damn rainbow? What's still around? Nigga, it'd be hella people in there. The one in the Western Hills Plaza. Oh, that's right. You that's your job. I was about to say I don't even know where Rainbow at. <laughs> I'll be at it was Saturday, too. I was like, damn, that's thick as hell at Rainbow. <laughs> he back out on the prowl too. <laughs> they, got, they got a sail in here. You know they love the UPS, man. Hey, <laughs> right. Fat X dude. Right. I'm dead <laughs> <laughs> my job, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was just thinking about this, bro. They be hiring anybody to drive them Amazon trucks. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I'm damn near tired of the shit. Thanks, bro. I was on my street the other day trying to get in my damn driveway. Motherfucker, Amazon truck just blocking everything. They Can't nobody go this way, that way. Motherfucker come stumping off goofy all in the phone. They don't give a fuck. That nigga look high and everything. I'm like, man, they who hired him? Hella. I be like, bro, this <laughs> hell. Like, they got radio and shit in there. Yeah, they be, man. They hiring everybody. If y'all need a job. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna go there if I ever need something quick right. too. Shout out to Amazon, my it's bad. Better than going in that warehouse, nigga. <laughs> Man, right. <laughs> you got two options when you need a quick job: warehouse or some truck shit, nigga. <laughs> so, shout out to my delivery driver. Bro. Make sure y'all stay hydrated. Man, hey, I always say, man, respect the delivery people, bro. Period. Thanks. That's a lot. Mm. That's why they got unions and shit, nigga. Y'all think that's little? Being out there in those streets and shit. Mm-hmm. I be worried about dogs and loose tigers. Nigga. Nigga. Oh, my. I be getting chased by dogs all the time. Oh, man. Niggas be like, oh, yeah, your dog, my dog cool. He cool. <laughs> I say, yeah. Bro. He don't bite. Nigga, head ass no. nigga. Mm-hmm. I had this. It was like I was in the country. I was in Harrison. Oh, hell no. Nah. And it was this big ass dog, bro. This nigga was like, don't worry. He can't get past the driveway. He man. got the collar <laughs> on. <laughs> that nigga was straight. <laughs> nigga, this dog ran through the electric fence, nigga, oh, nah, and jumped nah. on my truck, nigga. Mm-hmm. I kicked the shit out that dog. You should have. I'll fuck your dog up. Fuck that dog. <laughs> you hear me? Fuck that dog. Y'all, them, uh, y'all ever heard of Hillman? It's like a construction company. Mm-hmm. They be shipping like hella heavy ass packages, bro. And it was this one stop. Like I've been there before. Like they they teach you to beep your horn when you, and you do this with the up. HL. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So to, if a dog gum, they gonna run out. So I beeped the horn, but ain't no dog. And I knew dogs was there. <laughs> so I'm in my shit. Da, 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 like nigga, these three dogs came from around the house, bro. Oh my god. When so. I tell you, I power bomb this this box on the dog, bro. <laughs> Damn. I was like, <laughs> we do not support any animals hey, being abused. No animal. But we do support hey, the fence. <laughs> yeah, they be doing that shit like, bro, leave your dog in the house. I can't stand dog. I can't stand animal people for real. I, I, You know what I'm saying? I ain't out here just going to go. Like, I ain't no deer hunter or nothing. Damn. But at the I'm same cool time, you're an animal person, bro. I'm talking to you, Dan, my nigga. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to all animal people. Like, everybody ain't in love with your dog like you in love with your <laughs> dog, right. bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody don't care about your cat like you care about your cat, bro. Don't nobody give a damn about your snake, nigga. Pause, nigga. Like, hey, yo. like you give about your snake, bro. <laughs> like, don't nobody give a shit about none of that, bro. Like, it's cool. We respect you and everything. But, like, I'm not coming to a snake funeral. You know what I'm saying? I'm not coming to no That's dog crazy. funeral. You don't ask me to come speak That's crazy. at Pluto's death, nigga. What? Nigga. No. Like, it's cool. I ain't got no disrespect against animals. I love I, animal lovers be fired. The women that be animal lovers, bro, they be nice mm-hmm. women, bro. Like, that's cool. But at the same time, I'm not coming to Pluto's shit, bro. I delivered this shit the other day. I had to take a picture of it, bro. 
<laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, I'm riding around with this shit all day, bro. The box say, what it say? I got you, bro. <laughs> now go ahead, bro. What the fuck? This shit say. Yes. That's your. That's, look, we got young bull over here showing pictures. <laughs> hey, that's another thing, bro. If I'm showing you, you a, a picture snake? of my, <laughs> come, oh, let me see, let me see. That's a snake. I ain't got my glasses. These sunglasses. These ain't my real glasses, my nigga. Important. This package contains oh, cremated fire. pet remains. I, I respect it. I like. It's cool, but there you go. Cremated. Cremated pet Literally, remains. Bro, so what they do? They suck. They bruh. That's don't. crazy. All right, all right, bro. We in the middle of a podcast, my nigga. Oh, nigga. Hey. Take your snake back and put it. Uh, in <laughs> <laughs> nah, nigga. That snake was ass. You put lotion on him. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my nigga, man. Right, right. Let me not shut because you know niggas be ready to fight about their pets, bro. It is prime. What are you talking about, my dog? Nah, this shit is crazy. He I said walked it. up there like this though, holding the package like, <laughs> and then it had a signature required, so I had to wait on the owner and shit. So I'm like trying to be all. You respected like, the package, yeah, bro. I was like, <laughs> she answered the door all sad and shit. I felt like a fucking Paul Bear. <laughs> yeah, G walking up the sideway in secession mode, like <laughs> one foot at a time, type shit, right? Hey. Say goodbye. Right. Then I almost dropped the shit, bro. I was like, man. You said you almost dropped it? Because I'm holding oh, it, trying God. to get the signature, bro. I'm bro. like. Somebody probably would have came out screaming on top of their lungs, <laughs> trying to fight you if you did it. I ain't, I ain't know what to say. Like, I was like, damn. Have a good day. I wonder what they were going to do. With it. She looks sad as hell. Like, damn. I was, I was like, what kind of, what kind of pet is this? <laughs> <laughs> that just, rem- I can't. And I'm riding around with this shit all day, nigga. It's like dead animal ashes in my shit. Bro. This nigga, mobile, mobile pet cemetery. Oh no. god, damn. I had to go pray in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> the Took the sage out. Like, hold on. <laughs> all you animal spirits got to go. <laughs> yeah, for Scruffy, bro. Be whoever that dog was. Yep. All the Pluto, Scruffy, whatever their names are. They ain't rest in peace. They ain't uh, dogs having. Yeah. All right. dogs go to heaven. Right. R.I.P. Bo, nigga. That was my nigga. Yeah. And like Bubbles. that. Who? Bubbles. Oh, Bubbles. yeah. You had talked about Bo before. And your dog? Yeah. No. My nigga. I'm about to cry. See? That's, see, he, he, he just had but trauma. That's why, so that's why yeah, he don't have a dog. I would never get another dog. He's, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. had to hold on. Is y'all burying? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I told this story. So what do you, what do, you do? Hey, this no. nigga, I love that nigga. <laughs> yeah. He just threw him away in the garbage, nigga. I'm like, God what damn, you, G. What you do? Hey, no, his, nigga. his attitude about it was like, hey, oh, nah, nigga. Don't touch that damn dead dog. <laughs> he ain't, nigga, he wasn't dead, nigga. I ain't seen dead, bro. Let the motherfucking dog. Hey, just, he was at the vet. in the backyard. <laughs> what y'all do with him, G? Bro, he was at the vet, nigga. It's a mystery to this day. And he had, uh, like, he was... <laughs> Like he was in the basement and he was eating like the insulation and shit. So his like inside was mm. fucked up. So he would have had to have like a ten thousand dollar surgery yeah. and shit. Yeah. And I, I ain't know, care about him that much. Right, right. <laughs> we went and picked that nigga up. We took him to the park, nigga. Hey. He was giving me pizza and cheeses, all candy and shit. <laughs> Turned him up one last yeah, time. That shit was lit, nigga. Nah. The weirdest yeah, one. To the vet. To the vet. Mm-hmm. The weirdest one is when they stuff their animals. That's fried, nigga. Was it a taxidermy or some yeah. shit? That's crazy. That's some white people shit. I ain't never seen a nigga with a. <laughs> I ain't never seen a nigga with a deer head. Not a long dead cat or a rat or about to get one square right there. That'd be fire. You should. I was gonna do it. I'm gonna be the first nigga with a. Nah, probably yeah, ain't. Nah. I'm sure some niggas out there with something. Nigga, I be seeing shadows. Like a ram or a lion head. <laughs> What'd you say? I be seeing shadows at night. I fuck around, take off. I don't shoot at that motherfucker. Chill, bro. You be. Nah, we ain't even going down that road. Next topic. <laughs> he just said, I be seeing shadows at night. No bullshit. Just keep them hoes. Shadows in the fucking ice maker. <laughs> got them hoes running in and out, but a sage, nigga. Nah, I don't got no hoes. I know that's right. This is the holest podcast. Give it up for us, bro. Yeah, yeah. You can't even. This the holest podcast. All right. Yeah, all right. Young booze, y'all got some hoes? Y'all ain't go, yeah, 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 yeah nobody got some hoes here. Yo, this is, mom, we are ho- mom, this is holist money. <laughs> and no head challenge summer, nigga. Oh, you yeah, yeah, hear yeah, me? Get into that. How I, ain't get, doing? I ain't getting no head. Who? I ain't getting no head. I'm good. Yeah. Good. How about you, No Name? Hey, I'm all about my computers, bro. <laughs> you got the AI generated shit. Mm, mm, mm. All about my computers, man. 
We're gonna go over his name, his house one time. It's gonna be like a, it's gonna look like a tanning machine. It's gonna be a whole <laughs> sex capsule. <laughs> you gotta lay down right here. Yeah, you lay in there and then you just pull his valve right here and shoot yourself with this anesthesia and you fall asleep in it. Oh God! I'm fired up. <laughs> Coming to y'all in our pop up shop. Right. <laughs> Buy your sex capsule from us. You hear me? Twenty thirty nine. Pre-order start now. They sixty thousand dollars a piece. Right, send us ten bands right now. Yeah, and when they come on sale, they're gonna be two hundred fifty thousand. So if you get here early, we give it to you for sixty thousand. For sure. Yeah. So shout out to that. We call that the pre-com deal. Mm. <laughs> get yourself some horns or something, my <laughs> that nigga. Was fire, that nigga. was fire. <laughs> yeah, that's the new pre-com <laughs> deal. I love it. Yes. I don't pre-com though. Man, chill. Next topic, nigga. What? <laughs> Hey, <laughs> y'all want to pod today? <laughs> right, hey, hey. Straight up lying like in a bro, this yeah. nigga wild, bro. What? Yeah, I don't even want to ask, what are you talking about? Because that's a big ass pause, nigga. Like, what do you mean you don't pre cum G? I don't, nigga. It's one, one time only, nigga. <laughs> you got no leakage. That's a. Uh, all right, man, hey, man, maybe, maybe. It's clinically un. That's what I was, I don't know, maybe, maybe. I'm different. Yeah, hey, <laughs> shout out to the non pre coming niggas or something, but. <laughs> she get me right, my shit get the, please. Uh, excited? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I'm getting it's wet. Hey, it, it, hey. <laughs> the fall start, nigga. Bro, y'all used to watch uh, California Cation? That's my thousand. That, that shit was fire. They used yeah. to always say that shit. Like they'd be talking about dudes. Like, yeah, she got me wet. I'm like, these white boys are crazy. Like it was, it was funny. You know what I mean? Like, damn, she's hot. She got me wet. Like, I'm like that's kind of gay. But I guess you can be wet with pre cum. Yeah, so nice. shit, Probably man. Nasty. Nah, yeah, this the na- hey, y'all was- your dick like, oh, you wet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he ready? Hey, y'all ready? <laughs> hey, what's one part? Hey, somebody help me. So he- <laughs> Yeah. Nah, I know, oh, man. Easy. That's what pre-com do, though. Your shit stretch as far as it can, and it be like, all right, let me <laughs> go a little right, further. Now you out, you out, because you ain't even supposed to do no, no motion like that. Hey, that's what it do. That's the only way I can describe it, bro. It's like, hey, yeah. What it do? Flip this. Chill, ain't happening again. Now it'll be gay if I did it again for you. That's the second time up, make you gay. Yeah, hey, that's, that's, crazy. that's a fact. Shout out to Pride. Yeah, shout out to Pride. Except for whatever Tank was saying. Shout out to the Talking about something. Shout out to the gay niggas. Hey, Seth and the gay women. Well, if they gay women, they probably gay niggas. Anyways. And lesbians. Is they gay niggas? They gay niggas. That's what I'm saying. If they gay, if. Did y'all fuck a stud? Oh, it's not me. What if she fired? Nah, up? I fuck a stud. Fuck the bullshit. Man, I knew you. <laughs> what if she fired? You could just up? stay quiet, my nigga. Nah, I don't know. It depends. Man. A bitch come in and take her strap off. Like. <laughs> Like, you had this on all day. <laughs> yeah, that's number, crazy. You take your gun off, she over here, take her strap off. How was your day? Oh, yeah. Number one, you ain't coming in. nowhere near me. With <laughs> Keep that shit in the truck. That's bitch. an argument. <laughs> you put that shit in my house. <laughs> I told you not to bring that in my house. You a woman once you cross this barrier. That's a strapless house. That's fire. But, uh. It depends, though. I, I mean, they be thick. Nah, I'm man. cool. I'm just gonna say I'm cool. I'm just good. There's too many women out in the world, bro, to even. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, there's too many of them to even fuck it. Because for every stud, you can find a. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to ignore it because I'm trying to get out of here. For every stud, there's a beautiful woman that look like one. I don't know. Shit. You look like a stud? Hey, go get the one that ain't a stud, nigga. I'm cool on studs. Mm. Okay. You ain't cool on studs? You. Get with your voice. What's your vote? You a fucking stud? It depends on what she look like. You a fucking stud? I ain't talking about like I know you. Hey, you on a snake, nigga? You a (laughs) fucker? Niggas that on snakes. Hey, tell me one thing. That's why he put his phone back in his pocket, right here, man. (laughs) No name. You ever owned a snake? No. Okay, okay. With any reptiles? Nope. All right. What about you, G? Nah. I was on the uh, the reptile committee though in fifth grade. I had to clean the, uh, what is they called? They ain't lizards. Chameleons? They, not chameleons. They in the water, though. If it means? Frogs. Salamanders. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Salamanders, yeah. salamanders. salamanders. Them some slimy looking niggas. Yeah, they was some bullshit. I quit that. I'm, <laughs> I'm going back to the computer. Yeah, that's a skit. <laughs> G at the reptile committee. <laughs> now, who's going to clean the cages? 
Mm-mm-mm. Brother Mitch. Man. Y'all remember y'all fifth grade teacher? My fifth grade teachers was. Oh, you passed classes in fifth grade? You smart? You nah, man, they used to sit me outside the class, bro. They used to put my uh, chair because I used to be causing too much trouble. I was bad as fuck. I was fuck. bad as fuck, bro. I, I'm sorry to y'all, too. I'm sorry to Mrs. Uh, Miss Simpson and Mrs. Murphy. God damn. They was black teachers, too. And they knew my stepdad, too. Like, they was like, oh, oh you Larry's kid? I was like, no, they ain't my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was strong in that back in the day. Like, no, nah, that's my stepdaddy. <laughs> Like they came in, he's like, he was such a good student. We just don't know what's wrong with him. Right. <laughs> he just needs to be challenged more. Man, cause she actually Dumb teach bitch. him back in the day. Like, so Damn, is- everybody knew him. Everybody knew Miss Simpson. Like, she was just pr- famous in the Princeton School District. And uh, so yeah, sorry y'all, man. They was trying to do I me said, right. What was it fifth grade? Fifth grade was Brother Mitch. Sixth grade was Mr. Estes. Bro. Brother Mitch. Yeah. Oh, you went. That's right. You went to a private school. Yeah. Yeah. That nigga used to smoke cigarettes and shit before school. Like, nigga, ain't you a, a brother, nigga? You can't do that. Fuck it. I'm a Mr. brother. No. <laughs> Mr. Estes, though. Nah, these niggas was white. Yeah. Brother Mitch looked like. <laughs> these uh, niggas was white. <laughs> brother Mitch looked like. Uh, what's the painting, nigga? I know you're talking about. He fuck, was, what's the nigga name? Bob yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob what? Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Okay, yeah, Bob Ross, that nigga. Mr. Essie's, though, he was like an old white man, bro. And he used to sit, he used to do this. In cl- I swear to God, bro, I can't make this <laughs> up, bro. This is how he used to sit all class like this and just rub his chest, bro. Nah. Damn, bro, that nigga was a pedophile, bro. Probably. I don't about it. <laughs> I got to reach out to somebody in my sixth grade class. Yeah. Right. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Six, six, six. Fuck him up. That nigga. <laughs> and that nigga, y'all know how niggas be like, my teacher hated me. Like, that nigga really hated me, bro. Yeah. yeah. I used to be frying that nigga because he used to have a <laughs> handkerchief. Yeah. He had one handkerchief all day and he'd blow his nose all day. And every time he blows, I'd be like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, That's Johnny, crazy. go down to the principal's office. <laughs> man, hey, Kevin, guts. Fifth grade, man, I danced in front of the whole school. Oh, you was wilding? Yeah, it was, we had a concert. It was one of them like Christmas plays, you know what I mean? Like where you got the chorus or something, everybody sing, we singing songs. Mm. It was one of them songs. So we was in there. Y'all remember them, like, how the uh, choir steps is in them classes? Yeah. You get in there, you know what I mean? You on the back row. Like, I'm on the back row. We singing, dancing, whatever. And they was, like, these two little white boys. Mind you, this is my first year at Heritage Hill Elementary. Like, we was still where we live was, like, hood for real. Shout out to Crescent. What was that? Crescent Village or whatever. Like, everybody there. It was, like, some Section 8 shit. Motherfuckers were from the T. Motherfuckers were looking heights. Everywhere, right? Downtown. In Crescent Hill, this is in Springdale, like apartment complex. Oh, so we went to Heritage Hill. That was the elementary there. And uh, so this little white boy, he down there dancing and shit. Like, you know what I mean? He doing his thing. I'm just looking at him like, I can dance better than that nigga. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, why they choosing them type shit? You know what I mean? But I forgot. Now that I think about it, I was the bad black kid. <laughs> just in the back. They just like, long as he quiet, leave him alone. Right. I'm like, now I think about it. But then the teacher was like, uh, anybody want else try? Anybody else want to come dance? Like, raise my hand, man. Man, I went up there. I did the running man, like, all <laughs> different directions. They was like, oh! <laughs> like, I was just doing, that's all I knew how to do. I just did the running man hardest shit. Like, yeah. they was like, you want to do it live? Like, I was like, hell yeah. Like, and then I went up there, man. I was hyped, man. I remember just, I was practicing the running man in the mirror for, like, three days straight. Like, I'm, I'm about to kill this shit. I'm about mm-hmm. to kill this. So, whole family came. Oz was there. Grandma was there. You know what I'm saying? It was a moment, like, you know what I mean? So, I'm on stage. Like, my part come on. Like, I go out there. I'm hitting them with some slick shit. Then I'm like, oh, I'm about to get into this running man. Like, I was going, <laughs> like. Warming up. Man, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Then I can start my part come on. I start hitting it, bro. Like, I'm every direction with it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm going this way, that way, that way, that way. I get done. I'm sweating. I'm tired. Like everybody's like, you did a good job. Like, come back over to my aunt. She was like, nigga, why are you just going so fast? You was moving like a cocky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, man. Shout out to my auntie Von hey, Boom. Running man, though. So I got an uncle, right? Uh oh. See, that's why I was dancing like a crackhead. His name's Dad. Now, he ain't no crackhead, but okay. he's handicapped, though. Oops. Like, he got the hand like this. I shouldn't like laugh. This. Chill, bro. No, nigga. You being he, funny. I swear to God. All right, all right. Don't make me laugh. Y'all know I don't be lying on this podcast. You, nigga, you, this is our uncle, nigga. All right, all right. All right. But when he was nigga, laughing, too. Y'all wrong. <laughs> this nigga get drunk. He started doing the running. Oh, man, my but God. It's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? But then this one time, nigga, he was so turned. This nigga spent all the way around in a circle like this, nigga. We was like bad news. <laughs> y'all went crazy then, y'all. I already know you did. Hey, shout out to my nigga bad news. Mm, shout out to bad news. That nigga wild, bro. 
Hey, it ain't nothing going on in sports right now. No. Nah. Just... RIP to football, RIP to basketball right now. Just soccer. Soccer. Huh? WNBA. Okay. Come on the mic, young boy. Tell us everything uh, you know. You know he got a stud now. That's his go to. <laughs> Hey, you set yourself up. Hey, 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 hey. He trying to say smooth through like that. Hey, man. Hey, you better follow, you better follow your nigga right here. He know, he know this to be quiet. Like, <laughs> keep showing the snakes and shit. Like, I, <laughs> better sit over there and be quiet, young boy. Nah, we, I we, I watch, I'm I, just playing with you. I watched, like, the end of the game yesterday, though. Did you watch the, uh, the Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark show? Nah, nah. I watched the Reese. I don't be catching the game, so. I don't even I don't even know what channel they be coming on. Yeah. But shout out to them. Dude. I did see uh well first of all, we ain't been here since uh since the Celtics won. Boston. Yeah, since Boston won championship. I called it. I I saw it like I was like, Ooh. they gonna you know what I mean? They was gonna get it. Uh shout out to them though. Ooh. The Bengals, I did see this though in sports. That nigga uh Lamar, I mean Jamar out there. <laughs> They all in Paris, pool, nigga. Bro. Them big ass bell bottoms on, nigga. <laughs> them pants was fired. I ain't gonna hold you. Bro, we well, you know I get on there. Real, bro. Well, we, we can get over there. Models and that's shit. what I'm saying. So that's why I'm bringing it up, bro. Like they got chill, bro. We gotta win the Super Bowl. Dude. Yeah, they 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 divas. They getting money now. We know how that go. Yeah. Every one of them niggas getting paid now. It's like, uh oh. Well, mm-hmm. like who the young thirst? Like we Bengals be doing their shit because we always got a young, hungry, thirsty nigga. Like who is it right now? Who the, who the next one's up? Like, who the one got still got to get a good contract? Like, we done gave everybody everything. And I hate to sound like the white man in the box, right? Like, <laughs> can't give them niggas too much. They might start acting crazy. Like, <laughs> but now the money online, come on, man, with you. <laughs> like, I ain't, I ain't paid these niggas like that before. Why y'all doing it now? Yeah. You know, so. Ice of boss, whatever that receiver is, it was balling with. Oh, yeah, 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 young boy. Yeah. But, yeah, we, it's this year because, uh, what's his name about to be gone? T. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be it's a slow. Day. He don't ball because he want, you know what I mean? A he check. don't got a choice. Yeah, so it's like, we got to get this year because he going to give it his all. That shit. Unless we get some fire ass trade or something, but, you know, that's leaving it to the stars, right? That's leaving it to the universe and shit. Like, what stars we going to do for our. You know what I mean? What we going to do for us? what. You know what I mean, we put together so we just need a line. That's all it is. Give us a line. JB gonna do what he do. You know what I mean. I think that's the best line we done had for sure. They protected Since him. Yeah, in, last year, like bro. Carson Palmer years. <laughs> that was nigga. He was running for his line, life, nigga. Now, mm-hmm. nigga would be undefeated, bro. Yeah, yeah. then he be still running for his life, man. If he ain't get hurt, they, that was our Super Bowl year, <laughs> and we lost to the Steelers for sure. Cause we, uh, cause they won. Yeah. I feel like most of the time anything that come out of the AFC North gonna go all the way. Like this gotta be the liveest division, I think. And the toughest and the strongest, the most ground and pound one. Like it is. It really is. So anybody that come out of the AFC North got a chance to win it all. Period. That's, they got a, they got us on uh, hard knocks, the whole AFC North. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna shout that out last it's week. A, shout it's that the out. Mid-season though, right? Yeah, mid season. That's how you know we win in the Super Bowl. Is that it though? They just do mid season, they don't do like, they do, they do, the they do both. And then they do they, they, they gonna follow them for oh, the yeah. beginning of the season. When the season starts. Yep, yep, yep. I'm looking forward to that, man. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully. Hopefully it ain't just like lights, camera, action, because that can be very distracting. You feel me? Like, so. Nah, did we go to the playoffs yeah. last time we was on Hard Knocks? I don't think nah, so. Nah. We was just shitty. But who was on that one? It was Chad. Yeah. And who else? I don't think we barely we just had Carson. Oh, it was early, early then this before they was first came out. Yeah, yeah nah, that wasn't a playoff year. Yeah. yeah. Cause it took what Carson two three years to get to the playoffs. It might have been. Nah. I think it was. We was going to the playoffs every year. We just we just winning. lost that first game. <laughs> <laughs> it was important. Heartbreak days. <laughs> Nigga, oh my god. Cardiac, man. cardiac, cat days for sure. Let's talk about something else. Something else. <laughs> look, it started hurting his heart. Nah, for sure. That's that's real shit. Yeah, they uh. Man, shout out to the Bengals though. We always here at the Player Circle Bible Study gonna believe we win in the Super Bowl. So every year. Yeah. So shout out to y'all. Uh, hope everybody here, everybody listening, man, just thank God today. You feel me? I thank God today. Just take a moment, thank God. Chew. Gotta thank God, nigga. All right. Uh, before we leave sports, I forgot. Shakari Richardson going to the Olympics. Yeah. Shout out to her. 
Give her some hand claps, bro. She made it back. She made it she bad. Made it back. She, she did that, her that's a good story too, bro. She did her thing. Cause she didn't go last year. This, the last one did she? Cause she cause she uh, was she, she, got, she got caught with the weed. Uh, the weeds. So, but that's a good story because, man. First of all, how hard is it to go to the Olympics? Hard as fuck. That's, that's some hard ass shit to do. Pause. You can eat all because there's this uh, board member. At CPS, she got a gold medal from like relay. Mm-hmm. That's her whole from 1970, probably. So, it, huh? it was like yeah, like mm-hmm. early nineties. That's like nah, she a she a beast. I don't want to, you know what I mean? No, no, no. I'm just but saying. She, I know where you about to go with it. Yeah. Identity, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you can eat off of one yeah. mm-hmm. one gold medal. Just like you know, one I use Charles Bar- Barkley as a uh, example, right? Like I feel like some of the players don't even respect him because it's like he ain't got that ring or he ain't got that chip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, getting that championship it do mean something. It does open up a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Luckily for him, he was able to you know get a certain level of access with the NBA and still be involved and have a job, make money. But just like think about if he had a few championships like Michael Jordan, he'd be on the sideline chilling like Michael Jordan, not working, right? That's the difference, right? Like, Mm -hmm. who gonna be working when they 70 years old? I love it. It's a a balance, though, because I know a lot of niggas that got rings that be doing the analyst shit. No, for sure, like Shaq. But Charles Barkley, is a he a personality, so I feel like that's what really carried him. Mm Mm-hmm. He was, a, yeah, he was a personality even when he was playing. And that nigga's in Space Jam, bro. Shout out to Space Jam. So you ain't Charles Barkley. But I still think it's a difference, right? <laughs> like if you if you Jordan, or if you Charles, like, and you got the chip, yeah. or if you got an Olympic gold medal. Like I don't know anybody that got an Olympic go- a silver medal. That's Barkley crazy. Like how hard Barkley is it to get a gold silver? Medal, Who? When Barkley was on the dream team, wasn't he? Yeah, hell yeah, mm-hmm. hell yeah. Mm-hmm. But like I don't know anybody that got a silver medal. I don't know, not one person. So, I mean, and then for her to do that, to, she got qualified, whatever it was, four years ago. And then for her to come back and do it again, that's fire. For sure. That's too fire. So, yeah. shout out to uh, everybody turned on her yeah. nowadays. Oh, yeah. yeah. Except for yeah. Nike. Nike, you know. They been lacing her. Shout out to Nike. Yeah, they, they be about smoking. To sponsor us too, bro. Yeah, we right here. Just do it. The first podcast sponsored by Nike. That's fire. Sure, Speaking to the atmosphere. Simulation, do you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all got something y'all want to talk about, though? What y'all got? What's up? What's on y'all minds? Let's open up to the congregation. Young bulls over there. Y'all got something on y'all mind? Y'all got nothing on y'all mind? That's what's wrong with these young <laughs> niggas. <laughs> ain't never got nothing on y'all <laughs> mind. That niggas, I ain't about to say shit else. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was G4. <laughs> nah, y'all ain't got nothing going on in the world. Something y'all interested in? Something y'all ask some old niggas? Need some advice. Anything about except for the anything about pets, nigga. That's all. You ain't got nothing. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. Yep. Hmm. Sure. Well, you need some advice about being a father. Mm. Uh, That's a good one. Expecting father in the building. Yeah. Hey, hey. congratulations, <laughs> my brother. To my nigga. Congratulations, my boy. Welcome to the club. How you feel? Chilling. Chilling. How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? 20. That was how old uh, when I had from my first kid. Biggest thing to remember at that age, bro, you ain't perfect, you hear me? And then everything that you're doing at that moment ain't always going to be what's going to happen or how it's going to end up. Even the good shit. Huh? You say you learned that at a young age? What, what you mean? How you learn that? Talk about it. There it is. Y'all can have a conversation because you know what I'm saying. You 20, you know what I'm saying. You want to get some advice, bro. Yeah, go ahead. What you saying? I said I just learned the interview. What'd you learn? About what you just said. Just from family experience. I've been through a lot of that. I'm only in the tour. Mm-hmm. I'm already doing all that. Yeah. Are you, like, you said you're chilling, which I understand, but what does chilling mean? Like, because I know you have emotions. Like, you're not, you're not nervous. Haven't had no reaction to it. Yeah. It was like that for me. I don't think so. There ain't no reason to like be crying or no reaction about it. I ain't even saying necessarily in the negative. Yeah, I, I know. Like, I'm really, like, I, I ain't saying, like, oh, I'm certainly happy or I'm not, I'm sad about it. It, it, it is what it is. Yeah, you just had a. Yeah, well, I can't even do it. Yeah. 
You just at a medium place with it. You accept, you've accepted it pretty much. Yeah. I, hey, when I was 20 years old, I pretty much accepted it because you got to. You know, I ain't never have it in my mind that I was going to run out on my child. My father was never there, so I was like, you know what, that's the one thing that I'm always do right is at least be there for my child. She was saying something to me. She said, oh, I'm just playing it. But, like, that ain't what she meant. Like, she was talking about something else. And I was just like, hold on now. Like, no, you can't be playing with nothing. Like, how, how old is she? Seven years ago. Okay, cool. Y'all y'all together? No? It was, was she just, like, was she a girl? Or was she just, uh... Somebody I was, but... Okay, cool, cool. Was y'all broken up when while y'all was fucking? Yeah. Okay, I see how it happens like that, for sure. I mean, that's mm-hmm. locked at one time. Yeah, Yeah. Well. It'd be like that, man. But like I said, my advice still, even though you know everything, you would know it all. Uh, my my main thing, still, <laughs> you know, my main thing is he gonna take nah, a shot. Nah, nah, I'm just. Yeah. Facts. Facts. And, and you, you seem like a very observant person. That's that's fire at that age because most people at 2021 20, they're not observant of the world. Mm hmm. There it is. So, like I said, still, my main advice, man, like, right now, everything that you're doing, just staying, like, pretty much, I would say you just being present, bro. And that's actually fire. That's something that I practice to do. Because the older you get, the more you experience and the more you like, go through. Like, not to cut you off, but, like, I know a lot of people, too, like, when they first, like, heard, like, their first option was, oh, bounce. Like, get rid of it. Like, and it's just, like, they ain't no need for it because you kind of already know what you're doing. So, and it ain't no need for me to be saying that to her. Mm-hmm. That's real. Yeah. I mean, I got trapped, but <laughs> yeah, that's one thing you getting trapped. But you ain't saying you got trapped, right? He, he, he think you, you think he did? You think he got trapped? Why you say that? Okay, and she she. Like, I was, I was, it was around my birthday. There was a lot of stuff kicking in the air, like family issues. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it was just like it was like, a safe like, space for you right yeah. there. Yep. Yep. That safe pussy boy. Oh yeah. And you inebriated? That's where it go. It's probably good, man. Enjoyed it, bro. You'll get a couple more of those with her. You'll be alright. <laughs> you gonna get a coach. That's your baby mom. You gotta deal with at least for the next 18, nigga. So uh, shout out but to my nigga DJ. Congratulations yeah, though, DJ, still, for sure, man. Still congrats, still congrats. They, it is a beautiful thing, bro. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Both of them, they like young, smart niggas, so Yeah, for sure. You can tell. You can tell, man. Uh when I was 20, man, I remember one of the first things I, well, I, you know, you, they pregnant when they, when I was 20, mm. and I was probably like 21, 22, or somewhere. It was like 21, I think, when they had it. And uh, I remember when she came out, her mom was pussy, right? And it was the most alien thing I've ever oh, seen in my God. entire life. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Yeah, it just, like, that's why I think the simulation really broke. I was like, damn, this shit's some Matrix shit for real. Like, But my thing was, I didn't even know what I was expecting to see. Like, yeah. But it wasn't Me that. neither, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Me neither. It like, was not that. <laughs> man, we went to go see some comedian, some white dude. I forget who he is. But that motherfucker was like... He's like, yeah, it's like watching your favorite restaurant burn down. <laughs> he was like, used to eat there? <laughs> like, not no more. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker burned down. <laughs> like, yeah, that shit crazy, boy. And then the whole baby just slide out of her. You just like. Mm-hmm. So from for my, uh, my, Avela, my youngest daughter, she's 14 months now. This time, for some reason, they had me, like, help with the epidural. Like, I ain't never, I, I don't know if that's new shit. I had to do that the first time. But this time, they're like. You know, she got to bend over or whatever on the bed, and, you know, getting her back ready. You know, pretty much tape everything out except for her spine, right? Yeah. And then, like, they always just, like, hold her hold her right there, Dad. I'm just holding her, man. Motherfucker pulled out this damn needle. It was, bruh. It was a rule alone, bro. I'm sitting there. I'm over here, like, holding her, like. Yeah. She's like, what? I'm like, I was like, are oh, you squeezing my hand? Nah, <laughs> fuck that. I didn't want to tell it was coming, like. <laughs> bruh. Shout out to women though. Shout out to the women, y'all. That uh, childbirth thing ain't, ain't ain't nothing to play with. You know what I mean? That's it. Oh, postpartum, man. That's another thing, bro. Just you know, bro, like the first year after you had a baby, bro. Just just let her have it. Bro. Trust me on that. 
postpartum. Just let her have it. Being retarded. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> if your girl retarded, there you go. Just let her have it, bro. About yeah. Your I'm, any, I'm just yeah. Period, <laughs> bro. That per that postpartum. Oh yeah. Is she crazy? There you go. So postpartum, bro, it's coming, man. That shit. What I've learned doing it twice, bro. Like you just gotta let them have it. Yeah. You know what I mean, you don't even. You know, women really are going through a crazy chemical change when they have a child. You know, they depleted of all this fucking chemicals they done gave to this baby and shit. So they be running on E. And they be running on E for like the first year. I mean, I, I understand that, bro, but you can't be an asshole. You can't be a piece of shit. Nah, for sure. Nah, that, and that's actually the I other side of the, that's actually the other side of the conversation. Like that, that is actual conversation that be happening around these type of con, uh, you know, these topics is mm-hmm. women have to also have that account- accountability that the male counterpart is also going through this experience with you too. And then a lot of the things that we're becoming deplete. Like I gained a lot of weight with my girl over the last year. You know what I mean? That shit real. You know, women they will look at that like, all right, well that ain't da, da, da. until you really there with somebody and you there all the time. You know what I mean? And you. You, you you want to be involved, so you making sure if she needs anything, no matter what time it is, no matter how far she lives from me, even though we wouldn't even solidly together, right? I'm still like, you know what? I got to do this because who else going to do it as the man, right? So I do it, and it's like, you know, if she feeling some type of way or she reacting some type of way, like, I that that is the conversation, bro. That's the conversation. Like, yo, women have to be just as uh, aware and cognitive of the fact that the man in your life, that the male counterpart, maybe he ain't your man, maybe he's just your baby daddy, right? Whatever it is, maybe whoever that male counterpart is that you created that child with, also should have a, a piece of grace as well. You know, they, you know, and it goes both ways for sure. But hey, postpartum is postpartum, man, and it's a, it's a tough, t- a tough time. And I'm speaking fresh on it right now, my boys. You feel me? My daughter right now is 14 months, bro. Postpartum can last for a year or two years after the baby has been born. So, you know, me and my me and Avela's mom definitely done had some ups and downs. But I told her the other day, I was like, you know what? I really, I really commend you on how you handled the pregnancy and postpartum. Mm-hmm. Period. Because I done seen it. I done seen how I can go the other way, especially if you're not locked in or tied in with people, especially if they was just somebody you was just sliding by through. Right. That's going to be very, very difficult to, you know, stay put and, you know, you know, be steadfast in a situation when I ain't even like you from the jump. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's another that's another Y'all side of it. So. But shout out to everyone. Definitely, I just this moment we sponsored by Black women. So shout out to the women, you know that that do this, uh, carry carry these children, and uh, put in a lot of work with it. Uh, yeah, it's not retarded, man. For sure, that's a fact. <laughs> but uh, oh, a new, a new segment. This is a new segment. I'm gonna let y'all choose the new young shit, bulls. Y'all shit, gonna be in shit. on this too. Uh, new shit, new shit. And we going I'm just gonna try to add. I'm gonna add uh, more segments as they come. I just want them to come naturally, so this came naturally. Uh, Did it pre come? Definitely pre came. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely pre came. <laughs> definitely. All right. So uh, new new segment is conspiracy of the week. And I'll let you. Conspiracy y'all, of the week. Yes, conspiracy of the week. Are y'all conspiracy enthusiasts? Anybody here? Lightweight, medium? Not really. Not, not Nigga, you like the main you. one I always yeah, be I'm like, yeah, he the more than anyone no, here. You like, not? Sir, I, when I think of conspiracies, I think about like real life conspiracies, not like space and aliens and shit. Like That's that. real life conspiracy. But anyways, anybody else life. conspiracy? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, how about you? A little, bit. a little bit. about you? Like 9-11 is a conspiracy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not a big conspiracist. I'm not going to go find it. I'm not into it like that. But the more our world is shifting, you have no choice but to know. And everything's not necessarily even a conspiracy either. Uh, sometimes it's just because people just lack the knowledge of anything that I, I go find facts. Anything that I believe has factual stuff behind it, period. And, you know, I do my research and sometimes if it's interested to me, the most interesting thing that I follow is spirituality. 
you know, in all aspects. When I did go to college, I went for philosophy. So I studied religions, I studied ethnicities and things like that, diaspora, even though I didn't even know what that word was. All that type of shit was being taught in ethics and shit. And what I did learn also is you have to take everything in and be able to deduce your own thing from it, period. Like, you can't just believe what everybody's saying, you know? So I'm using Wikipedia. I usually use ChatGPT, but I felt like it was easier because they broke it down into the table of contents. And we'll go through that, though. So I'll let y'all choose which one. Y'all choose uh, Y'all choose the topic, and I'll read them off. And then y'all let me know. We'll do a vote, and then I'll just open it up, and I'll just do a random. We'll read it, and we'll see if we believe it or we know anything about it or if it stands out, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Man. Here go the topics. We got aviation, business and industry, deaths and disappearances, economics and society, espionage, ethnicity, race, and religion. That's the one I would put, choose for myself. Fandom, celebrity, relationships, and shipping. That's deep. What? How does fandom, celebrity, relationships, and <laughs> shipping go on one? That's interesting. But anyways, government, politics, and conflict, medicine, outer space, science and technology, or sports. Which one y'all want to go with today? Let's do sports. Sports for you? You want to do sports? Yeah. Yeah, sports. What'd you say? Business. Business? All right. Uh, we got two on sports. What would you say? I would say deaths and disappearances. Who? Deaths and disappearances? All right, y'all just won. We'll go with sports then. Boxing. Rigged selection process. Ronaldo in the 1998 World Cup final. New England Patriots. That's a good one, ain't it? I got a good conspiracy. For sports? Yeah. All right, then what is it? Go. Did y'all hear about the Michael Jordan uh, stat pad and shit? Nah, bring it up. That's a good one. That's a sports one. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the year when he won the defensive, defensive player of the year and the uh, offensive player of the year, they went back and <clears throat> won. I for, let me look it up. They were like half. Half assists counted as four. So yeah, like they was giving him steals hmm. that he wasn't really getting. Yeah, they was giving him all uh, field boards and shit. Yeah. Then his like, boards, they was giving to him. Damn. But it was at home, though. Like, so it was like, that's what the dude did. He took the tape from the away games and the home games, and he watched them because it was like over a span of like eight games. They say he had like 23 steals. But when he went back and watched each game, he mm -hmm. really only had like, 12 steals. Mm. Michael Jordan, stats. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my niggas. First things first. What's that? It's a sports talk show. And uh, they, be they be talking oh, about Oh, and Nick Wright? Yeah, that's my Nick, yeah. Nick Wright, uh, Chris Boussard. Mm -hmm. Nick Wright, so LeBron. So, so do y'all believe this, this conspiracy? Hell yeah. Like, dude, actually, like they said, the dude who went and did it was like real credible. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It said, okay. put simply, Jordan steals and blocks nearly doubled at home compared to on the road. To account for a possible uneven playing time, you can look at 36 minutes. That's too many big words. So it was the, pe the what, the stat managers doing it? The stat manager at in Chicago was mm -hmm. giving him. Like it was saying, like you know, like fifty fifty balls and shit like that. Giving him all. He was giving everything extra that, to Jordan, even if he ain't had no involvement. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. So what's happening? Like, is is it like somebody getting charged? Is it like a nah. somebody just bringing it to light? They ignoring his ass. That shit too far gone now. Damn. Oh, hey, Michael Jordan, man. Too far gone. What y'all gonna do? Take all the Jays back? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to that one. Uh, so let's do one more though, cause I uh we can do one more. What was which one you say, bro? What was yours? Business. Death and death and disappearances. Let's see what they say. Damn, business was my second one. Business was your second one. Yeah. We'll do death and disappearances. They got the uh, John F. Kennedy on here. That one. You know what that is? I know. <laughs> Type <laughs> shit. Hey, that's a real ass no, question. Real. You never know. That's but, uh, crazy. Juice World. Death World of yeah. other prominent figures. And that's the whole thing. Like, I was just trying to find something that we might know. Yeah. These don't even break down. So, uh, death and disappearances. Any of those that 
What y'all think? Do y'all think the Illuminati be killing off people and shit? Hell yeah. That's a good one. Like, uh... You believe in, in Illuminati, you don't believe in aliens. Mm, what you think? Like, some they clone Tyrone? What did I just say? Like, uh, Gucci Mane? That's what I'm saying. All right. Gucci wasn't clone. Gucci just went to jail and got healthy. <laughs> I got a wild I've been to jail. You get healthy because you ain't eating nothing but that shit. <laughs> this, this girl that I was talking to said that she was at the, like, the Bengals game. Oh, shit. When DeMar Hamlin, like, she said that nigga really dead, bro. Like, they got a clone of that nigga. Damn. Damn. What? Somebody said he really did. That's crazy. And, and after that, y'all see how all his tattoos with the way different than what they did. Nah, I ain't peeped that. See, nah, now that's now, a CR, There we go. Like that's what we it. need. <laughs> oh, what well, he said, if y'all ain't hear it on mic, they uh, it says tattoos. He said his tat yeah, it says his tattoos look different. I don't know about that. I ain't even about to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but uh I believe it, man. Yeah. Like y'all seen uh clone Tyrone? But why? Y'all though? ain't seen that? Oh, y'all fuck with that. Go watch that. Why are they gonna they clone, clone Tyrone? Devin Hamlin photo. I mean, for me, all right, I'll let y'all, and that's a part of this conversation too, right? We gonna go over it, and, and that's a good question, right? Like, why would, okay, why would they do that? And I have a, I have a you know what I mean? I have my reason. Why do you think they would clone them? Why? why? Yeah. Yeah, and like that's what I was gonna say. Like the NFL probably like, nah, we can't. Mm-hmm. You gotta think about it. When you got somebody that's popping at that time, you don't want to let that fade go away because white people was making money off that person. Mm-hmm. And that person out there making that money that's hurting their pockets, they don't like that. Factuals. It's bad for and business. It's not, it's not even with just like only the little money. It's the government. No. So that's why. I, w- Watch uh, They Clone Tyrone. It's more cinematic. So, I mean, if you just going to watch it and it's like, okay, it's a cool movie. Uh, but a lot of that stuff in that movie was embedded into what built America, man. They were experimenting on us a long time ago, especially black people. You feel me? Y'all probably know You probably know about the Tuskegee, the Tuskegee experiments. And that was just one of them. The Baltimore uh, syphilis thing. Y'all heard about that one? They pretty much was giving syphilis to black people, just giving it to them, giving it to them just to see if they could, you know, contain it with Baltimore. <laughs> I knew some have it. Yeah, I could taste it on this water down here. <laughs> this water tastes different in Baltimore. Uh, shit. So I think the cloning thing, it could definitely be real. Uh, have y'all seen The Manchurian Candidate? That's a, with uh, Denzel Washington. Movie fire. That's a fire movie. So they pretty much, pretty much everything they saying they doing with Joe Biden. Y'all probably heard like that nigga really a robot. He really control A, B, and C. Uh, it was pretty much like that with Denzel. They was trying to make him a public figure, and he was a clone, pretty much, or a, not even a clone, but a controlled being. And they actually do that. They study, L, you know, they did studies on LSD. Uh, fuck is it was all called. Uh, Something Ultra. I'm going to look it up. MK Ultra. I'm going to look it up because, like I said, I'll be knowing these things as I see it in, in, in my travels. Mm-hmm. My travels. In my travels <laughs> through the world. MK Ultra. They could be flying All right, here we go. So I'm going to read it right. to y'all. He did hack his own bank account. In Type shit. That was, yeah. I was like, you know, I thought about this. I was like, damn it. Did you figure out? <laughs> Future Zay. <laughs> nah, hell no. Nah, I ain't figure that shit out. I got to figure that out. A hey, matter Mark, man, I love y'all, but uh, <laughs> be real careful with Meta. That's crazy, Facebook. But uh, Project MK Ultra was an illegal human experiment program designed and undertaken by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency to develop procedures and identify drugs that could be used during interrogations to weaken people and force confessions through brainwashing and, psycho- and psycho- psychological torture. It began in 1953 and was halted in 1973. MKUltra used numerous methods to manipulate its subjects, mental states, and brain functions, such as the covert administration of high doses of psychoactive drugs, especially LSD. So whatever I was watching, maybe it was a documentary, uh, they would actually have people like in a club, right? And they would microdose people with LSD. And they didn't even know they was getting this LSD. And it's all real. This is all released you know, public records and this, you know, 
anyways, I'll get back to my first one while I brought it up. But let me explain what they was doing here. So they're giving these people, microdosing them LSD and watching them in the club partying and interacting behind, like, you know, two-way mirrors and stuff. Mm. And watching who was going to have sex, fucking, like, these people. And there was... G? G was there? <laughs> my nigga was there in 1953. <laughs> but, and so... See me on LSD, I'm like Terry Crews for real, nigga. <laughs> I'll be on white chicks like... <laughs> Man, nigga, what? Yeah, hey. But so the government definitely be doing their things, doing these experiments, and we don't know about them until 50, 60 years later. We'd be like, all right, damn, they was doing that to us the whole time? Like, what's going to come out about COVID? You know what I mean? Like, that was a major, you know what I mean, part of American history. Uh you know, so, hey, that's the conspiracy of the week, though. So we'll, we'll try to, you know what I mean, talk about more things that's going on. Because that's, that's interesting, like, to know who believe in aliens, who don't believe in aliens, or who believe there are people being cloned and things like that, you know, uh, having these type of conversations. What typically happens is, like, all right, I believe one thing, then, all right, you got to go over there. And everything be spread out, and everybody, you know, choose their side, when in all actuality, the simulation is like this, you feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, the more you know, I got something. The better you can survive. I don't think it's, it's not necessarily a conspiracy, but it's like, it's a question. So I was talking to somebody and they said that if Kobe Bryant wasn't the type of person that he was, that he would still be alive. So like, you know how Kobe got like the type A personality. Like I got to win at all costs. Like I'm going to get there, get there, get there. So the point made, that was being made was it's don't have nothing back in it. Like, but I, it, it, the scenario do kind of make sense. Like, Kobe, like, no, we got to get to this fucking championship game. Like, so we got to get on this fucking helicopter, mm-hmm. even though the the pilot telling them this is not safe to fly. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard about this. Yep, yep. But then it's like, now you're the pilot. It's like, this is Kobe Bryant. Like, I, I could lose my job, all mm-hmm. this shit. Like, mm-hmm. so, like, it kind of makes sense. Like, I could see a scenario where it was like, no, nigga, we going, so get it right type shit. Oh, for sure. I mean, shit, that's who Kobe was. Let's, like, let's, like, niggas be watching sports, you know what I mean? And niggas be watching the documentaries. Yep. And it's like what they say, if it quack like a duck, it's a duck. You know what I mean? We done heard from Shaq. We done heard from his teammates. Like, this nigga was vicious. He was going to win at all costs. This is also why we praise and sometimes shoot LeBron down on the totem pole because he, oh, he doesn't have the Kobe or Jordan killer mentality. So. I would never want to live no. like that, bro. Like, I, yeah, it ain't, it ain't healthy. Like, did y'all watch the Tiger shit? No. Nah. Like that, that, mental, that mental scenario where you have to win everything like that's like that's why tiger woods was fucked up nigga yeah yeah it's uh, a <laughs> nigga was taking ambient <laughs> bro like motherfuckers uh you know they you probably heard people say like in order really to be super super successful you got a little crazy in you you know what i mean right. like that's true or like think about the motherfuckers that's the richest right now like elon musk and shit like that nigga autistic yeah, you know I mean, but like, a little something gonna be off about you. What's your trade off? Like, if you could have ten billion dollars, but be a fucking weirdo, like Elon Musk, like, what's the trade off? I or, don't think he weirdo. He probably just being him. You know what I mean? He just got there somehow. Like, we, who knows how he got there, right? Yeah. I'm sure hard work. I wouldn't take that away from him. I know but that like, he okay, hard work. We'll use Tiger then, because th- that's something that he's doing individually. Like, so he got all the attention, but in a documentary, he don't like the attention. Like, like, but when you win and you that good at golf, that's what comes with it. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm saying like, what's the balance of that? Like, I think with money comes magnification. Money is, or success, cause it ain't even gotta be money. It could be exposure, it could be fame. Whatever it is, it's gonna magnify who you are. You know, whatever state you're in today, if we were to walk outside right now and find a billion dollars and we split it, and now we up, up. Whoever you are right now is who you about to be with the same amount of money. You know what I'm saying? So imagine. And it, so I always think about that, like, you know. You might be hoeing. <laughs> I'm probably, it's going to probably be some hoeing in there. Let's be honest, bro. Wow, it is what it is. 1,200 bitches but, waiting, bro. But, but also, <laughs> that's the real, that's how you, you got to know yourself, though. Yeah. You got to know yourself in every situation. Like, I did LSD before, and I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't dancing like Terry Crews. 
but some people were. Some people might. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's and just experience. how you uh, you did it with a group of people. Uh, I did it with a white girl. It was some white dudes and white girls, and it was you my boy. No. Uh, my Is LSD boy. and acid the same thing? I believe so. See, I went in there. Uh, yeah, I'm close. So, so, yeah. Yeah. I think the way they, the chemical, the way they break down is what makes them different. Um, I had a great experience on LSD. I would do it again. Well, I would have. If I would have had some, I would have did it again. But now I'm a little old, so I'm, you know, like trying new shit at this point. Yeah. But, you know, I might actually do LSD if I'm, I got to be up, first of all. I don't feel like I'm up, up. I feel like I still got a lot of work to do. Um, Cause the place that I would do LSD would definitely be somewhere seclu- secluded around a bunch of people that I trust and want to be around doing it. So mm-hmm. that might cost money because the people you want might not be able to afford to go around the world where you're trying to go to do this type of shit. In my case, that's what I'm on. Like maybe Hawaii, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely would, if I had the resources to go to the Amazon and do ayahuasca, I think I would do that. Uh, and I think that is all based off of my experience with LSD. You know, when I did LSD, I was 19 years old. Um, I was in Fairfield. I can't tell you if I had a job or not. Um, definitely was probably girl crazy. Going to work on LSD is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you if I had a girl or not, but I do remember the experience, and it, and it lasted probably about a strong 24 hours as far as the effects. The after effects lasted probably, I want to say, three years. Four or five, three, four or five, three to four or five years. One around that time. Like, is you okay? Are you okay? Right. <laughs> so the person I did LSD with. The, what's the after effects? Like, what do that? Like, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll just go in, in in order. So the other person that I did LSD with, that was actually my boy, my friend. Uh, he had a bad experience. Like he ran to the church, saw himself in the casket. You know what I mean? And damn, he's kind of never really been the same. You know, it changed him, you know, tremendously um, in that regard. So that's another thing. Like, these things are super dangerous, right? And you can do them once, and you can be fucked up forever. But that come with anything and shit. You, they show you your real thoughts. What? Those type of drugs. They open up your mind. Yeah, and, and I think we've had this conversation thoughts. before. If you're not prepared to live and know your own thoughts, mm-hmm. don't do it. Just keep going. You know what I mean? Like, because it's going to... It's going to and it's more negative because it's, you know, shrooms are more perspective, more introspective. When you take shrooms, it's more natural. And they open up your mind and they let you see your thoughts. But acid, the way that it's made, man-made, makes it more negative. So you see more of your negative thoughts than you would on shrooms. You did LSD before? No, nah, but I'm saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. If that happens to a person. I didn't see any negative thoughts. Like I said, I was in that age, I remember. I was going to church with my parents, but I remember reading books on yoga, kind of finding myself, mm. you know what I mean, searching and researching other ways of life. Uh, that's when I got into meditation. Uh, I think I had my heart broke by a girl. That's probably what, like, propelled me. Something like that, right? I'm, I'm studying. I'm, re- I'm going to the library a lot around that time. I do remember. Just before? Yeah, this is just build up to that. Um, so I'm already researching things, just opening my world. The church I was going to was, like, very spiritual-based. So it was, like, my relationship with God was, like, tenfold and it was like expanded like mm. like it's a lot of negative condemnation that come to you know the church that me and g had went to but then there's a lot of positives and one of the strongest positives for me was it was like okay i could still have a relationship with god and not be too focused on like uh all these things that are in flesh because that's what happens a lot of time with people is they can't necessarily be spiritual all the way because they got all this like I can't enter the presence of God if I'm A, B, and C, you know, whereas you're literally in God all the time. And once I grasped that concept, that gave me so much, my fear was less. It gave me more confidence and spirituality gave confidence. Like I can walk into any situation, any room, any place and be good. I can be quiet if I want to be. Or I could take over the scene if I want to. And that's everywhere I go. You feel me? So that's just, that's my God, my God level of this acceptance. So I'm always in God, always with God. Uh, you know, my view of God, we can get into that. But just to get back to the LSD, I, uh, I do it. I did it. We did it. It was on sugar cubes. That shit melted in your mouth or whatever. Pause. 
And, uh, you know, about maybe 30 minutes later, you just start buzzing. Like your whole body just starts buzzing. Uh, it's like the best way to describe how everything happens. It's like when a, a television, remember the old TV? I don't think the new TVs do this, but you know, the shh, the, that, that black and white static, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's what it felt like. It just, it creeps in, it's, it starts in your head, and then, you know, it go throughout your entire body, and then everything just becomes super sensitive within, best way to explain it, is like your whole body is now like static, just like if you sit on the toilet too long and your legs start to, you know what I mean? But it's not an uncomfortable numbness, it's not like that. But that's the, like, it's a, you control, you can still walk, but it's like you really are a walking mm -hmm. static being now, right? And just think of, and now with my understanding of just science and everything, so think of every single black and white static piece as his own one plus one equals zero, one plus two equals three, or this is zero, zeros and ones, right? It's a bunch of zeros and ones. So when you walk past people, all your zeros and ones is reacting with their zeros and ones, and you can literally feel it. But it ain't like an over crazy feeling like, oh, this is scary, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to feel like that. It's almost as if, not almost as if, it's actually just like taking you to who you really are. And you feel comfort in it. You're like, oh, it's almost like I've been here before. So it ain't even scary. Where the mind part comes in is you start to notice shit like, okay, I can change the colors on the, I can change the leave colors. Shit like that, you know. <laughs> And then that's when you hear the stories like, yeah, dude, the uh, the walls was melting or I saw a dog turn into a, a ninja, which was what the white dudes were saying. It was like, bro, the cat has on a ninja outfit. I'm looking at this cat <laughs> and this cat looking at me like, what would you, what, uh, what would you have me do next, master? This cat, the cat was talking to you? The, nah, for real, but I'm just saying that's how I saw that being. His dark eyes looking at me and I felt in control of him. Not in control of like, you're my animal, but in the control sense of like, if he was a tiger, it was more of a, I am the dominant being because my experience is way holier than yours. You know what I mean? And that's, and it just magnifies that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so all the beings, everything that's around you, right. You just, it's not even a, it's a, it's not even like a, you know, I, cause I hate to say like, I'm your master type of thing, but it's almost like the universe is at your will at that point. And I remember the first thing I did once I started feeling that buzz, I just felt really good. Like I wanted to listen to music. So I had some headphones on me. I put my music on and I was listening to 50 Cent Massacre, right? And I remember it just like, that was the first thing that popped on. And uh, I remember just hearing how the sounds broke all the way down, like to the bit ratio, to the Hertz. Mm. Like you can just, you feel me? Like you can just hear the echoes come in and out of a door almost. Nigga was high. <laughs> high, high. You can hear that motherfucker. Whatever that, you know what I mean? When that soon as that bass hit, you can hear the, the door. You can hear the motherfucker pushing in the studio. <laughs> like yeah. it didn't travel through. <laughs> like it was just pure. You know what I mean? Everything you listened to was just that pure. It was like, damn. Start seeing Metro booming. Nigga. Hell yeah. I'm, look, I'm looking at my headphones like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, this some new shit. So that was sound. Just to give you a perspective of sound. There was, and that's just one experience of sound, right? Like there was multiple experiences of sounds. Like my sound was very clear. You know, I, I can't hear thoughts or some shit, but honestly, if I felt like if you focused on it, you could, that's how you felt. You were just there, but that was so below my, what I was here for type of mentality, I guess. You know what I mean? It was like, it went to sound. Then it went to taste. Cause I remember, uh, they had some grand, uh, some cinnamon graham crackers. I was hungry and shit. Motherfuckers got the munchies and shit. And I ate the uh, cinnamon graham crackers. Yeah. And they was nasty as shit. I was about to say, you tasted the tree. I the tasted cinnamon. everything. <laughs> and I, right. I love them. Like, but that time I did not. Eat all that shit. Yeah, I tasted the chemicals. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? Like, I'm tasting chemicals in this motherfucker. That's cinnamon. I was like, what the fuck is cinnamon? <laughs> Like this, is, and and that's also how you really travel yeah. through the world. Like, what the fuck is cinnamon? Like, this is some wild shit. Like, like nah, yeah, on. yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, it was very long time before I started eating graham crackers again, for real. Like, <laughs> probably till when Aja was born. I was nineteen. She was born around twenty twenty one. Probably took three years for me to eat a graham cracker. I was like, mm -hmm. I tasted it. You know what I mean? I was like, damn, that's some. But then there you go. So, so what through, was that past feeling afterwards that you was talking about? Like after the high. So For three years, what, what, what was that feeling? So, uh, 
let me get to touch though. I want to go through all the senses so y'all can really walk with me. So hearing, you just can hear far. You can hear, you, it, it, it's hard to explain, but you can just hear like the origin of wherever that sound comes from. Mm -hmm. And then taste wise, you can taste everything. You might not have the words to know what it is, but you're just tasting everything. Cause all, just like your whole body is these static of ones and zeros, right? Mm -hmm. And just, you know, interacting with the, with the universe. Your taste buds got all the same static going in, so you just, you're picking up a bunch of shit. All right, and then your feeling, just to go back to the buzzing feeling, right? You just feel open. You know, you don't feel, you feel your body. You know what I mean? I ain't just walking around, motherfucker, like, you know what I mean? Just like a ghost or some shit. You feel your body, but you just feel that it's an electromagnetic pulse everywhere. So you just feel everything. And then your sense of smell is ridiculous. But it's almost hard to differentiate, like dif how you say that, di differentiate between what a smell is, like what you're smelling, because you're just smelling everything. But you can, like if something happened, like if uh, for a while, like if I smelled Popeye, I knew it was Popeye's, and the motherfucker Popeye was like a mile away or some shit, right? You just yeah. smell Popeye's, like in the air. You just more, you know, you're in the air with it. Um, Am I missing a sense? Because I want every sense to just be explained. So hear, touch, smell, and sight, and taste. And everything is just magnified. And then from there, I went to go study. That's the first thing I did and the next day. I, I had the best sleep of my life. I went home, and it was probably like, so for eight hours, I was pretty much high, like high as shit, like mm -hmm. on LSD. And for eight hours, you're buzzing, you're feeling it, and then you crash. And I went to sleep and, you know, I had no dreams or nothing, just went to sleep. But when I woke up, the buzz was still there, but I was like clear as shit. Like I was ready for information. I was like, damn, I experienced all that. I went to the library. That, I swear to God, that was, the, and I still hadn't heard from my nigga yet too. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the first 48 hours. Like, you know what I mean? And this, and this when cell phones was new, <laughs> like you just texting nigga maybe and it might be off. Like, you remember yeah. you could still text and not make calls. It was yeah. just weird. It was hard to get in touch with motherfuckers at one point. Like, so it was like, I'm just living my life. I went to the library. That was the place that I thought knowledge was first. I was like, damn, I just want to go learn some shit. Man, went to the, went to the library to start absorbing all types of shit. I mean, I read all types of books, man, and um, some books that might even scare people, bro. I just, I was just in, in that shit, some, all types of shit. And for the next two, three years of my life, I was propelled in a motherfucker. Like, I was hella pushed for some reason. It was just like, I could do anything I want. Mm -hmm. I could do anything I want. I remember in that time, like, me and my niggas started a, uh, it was called Black King Inc. It was our little promotion company. We was throwing little jazz parties and shit. Pretty much doing some shit like we was doing, you know what I mean? I'm fucking, like, up on stage hosting shit, right? Inviting people out. Uh, had a band, and I just felt clear navigating through shit. Um, and it was just fun, man. And then, of course, in that little short span, then I had my daughter, and that's probably on it tip into that and uh that's when i went to school too at the end about the that second or third year after i had lsd i went to school and uh i actually ran to be the student president one at i was at cincinnati state and it went shit else to do but go to school i was looking for something to do they was like you should be student president i'm like okay I was yeah, I was going to school for philosophy. I never wanted to go to school. So that was like literally after those two, after that LSD, I was just like, I'm going to go be a senator. But, and this all can come full circle to this. Uh, God slowed me down because honestly, bro, I was going to school and y'all might laugh at it or you think it's funny, but I'm being dead ass serious. I was going to school to be the senator of Ohio so I can have a better connection with a drug cartel. <laughs> I wanted to be Nino Brown, but I knew how I needed because I went to what I was in Westchester seeing how these niggas move like politically and shit. And I was like, oh, okay, I got to fuck it. Like I'm a gangster, but I got to be like, you know, tied with a tie on and a suit. So that's kind of part of my personality as well. Right. You know what I mean? So all that just kind of led into me just really trying to go after it. Then I had my daughter and then I got a baby mama, obviously. And she like, look. Bro, you can't be doing all this crazy shit around me and a child. Like, like you try to be <laughs> try to be a kingpin and you going to school. Like, mind you, she in a regular family. You know what I mean? She got her bachelor's and shit. Like, what did you like? Hey, boom, boom, boom. So I definitely went to work, which I shouldn't have. I should have just kept doing the fuck I was doing, right? And uh, so I went to work. I I was trying to go to school. Mind you, like I said, 
I was a student president, so that was a job in itself. We had office hours, and then as a student student president, they was having me in all the student activities that was going on. Meanwhile, being a hoe, let's be honest, all that, because now I'm the student president. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm getting all the hoes now. <laughs> like, they coming here from UC and Xavier trying to recruit me to go there now, join the fucking, uh, they, they, uh, they, they fraternities, they cults, right, shit like that. Mind you, once again, that was another thing. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. Like, I, I'm glad I never got into a fraternity. I don't know what's inside of my hating on it, but for me, I was like, I'm my own individual. Like, my eyes was just too open for me to just go and be, like, getting paddled by somebody, bro. And that's, that was my thought at 19, 20 years old. So, uh, but it was a one, I would, like I said, I would do it again. There's people that microdose and shit. Um, you know, I would Micro, do it again. Microdosing acid is crazy. Yeah, people, right. People do that. Billionaires, like a lot of podcasts I listen to, it'd be like people, you know, the type of niggas I listen to. Motherfuckers that do ultra marathons and they run 148 miles straight through the desert for 24 hours straight and shit. Uh, one of my best bike customers, man, Mr. Clark, shout out to him. Uh, that's what he do. He run ultra marathons. He'll run 100 miles. He'll run the Appalachian Trail, which is like 6,000 miles from Atlanta all the way up to Maine or some weird shit. It's crazy how far I go, you know, and that's what he do. He'll come in. I might not see him for two two months or something. He'll come in. Hey, what's up? I asked him what he doing. Yeah, uh, just got done running the 100 in Nevada or something. Yeah, I did the flying pig the other day. I was like, ain't that a – oh, no, that's just a 5. I just did a 5K. I was like, damn, I died doing a 5K. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? For him, that's just his regular shit. Like, he's literally a man who wakes up and goes running for a living for real, you know. Real fit. I want to say he he he's in his seventies too, but he look like he forties. Like he a white guy, you know what I mean? He, his wife look good, you know what I mean? He come in there and buy the most expensive bike like once a year, every year, and that's what he do. So those type of dudes, I be following, I be listening, and the motherfuckers that's they be doing the crazy shit, ice plunges and you know retreats and shit like that. Which when I when I get to a point where I can really afford and indulge in some stuff like that, I definitely will. You know, but you got to be in a pl certain place in life. Like, you know, you can't, you know what I'm saying, barely can pay your bills and <laughs> be in Amazon doing ayahuasca because if you get fucked up, you're going to be even more fucked up. Because once again, to circle back, anything that you do or gain is going to magnify who you are right in that moment. You feel me? So whether it's money, whether it's fucking you do a certain drug or something or whatever you do to expand your mind or expand who you are, money's just going to... So you got to know who you are, man. But... um. Yeah, yeah, LSD. <laughs> it's crazy. If that, so would you do it now after that ex explanation? LSD? Nah, I'm, I'm gonna stick to my natural shrooms. And but like the shit that weed. you was explaining, that's how I be when I be on weed, nigga. <laughs> so I know I can't. <laughs> yeah, have we, yeah, we to do that. To, <laughs> we do that to me too. It just it take you. It just take you higher, bro. You know what I mean? It just. Uh, I, I mean, I went. That's not a drug. I'm gonna recommend anyone do. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be an advocate of doing it because I saw if you're not there and it'd be the ones that think they are there. You know what I mean? If you don't, if you got any question, cool, just stick with whatever you stick to and leave it alone because it's not for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It just ain't. So, but uh, people that do do it, more power to you. So do -do. You know what I'm saying? And then That's if you at a certain age, don't be trying new shit. You too old and too responsible doing new shit. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the shorty name that... Uh I ain't gonna say her name. That was working with you. That did the uh the massages and shit. Pause. Oh yeah, yeah. Like she, that's what she was telling. Like when she was trying to explain like shrooms to me and shit. Mm -hmm. She was like, "You not scared of the shrooms? You scared of like your mind?" For sure. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah nigga, I'm your scared. Real Fuck life, my yeah, <laughs> your real life be happening." Yeah. I got a conspiracy theory though. What? My conspiracy theory is. All them women who be saying a nigga be insecure if his girl take a picture with Chris Brown and he call off the wedding because Chris Brown grabbing his girl. She and what to his girl? You know, Chris Brown, he got this tour. Well, I know that, but what was this photo? It depends yeah, on so the picture. Like, yeah, so he got this tour going on, so you pay uh, $1,100 to take that picture with Chris Brown. So Shorty took the picture with Chris Brown, Chris Brown grabbing her ass, and then the dude called off his engagement with the Shorty because of that picture. It's slow. You know what I mean? But pe you know, people out there saying he insecure for for calling off the wedding. Um, the There's other niggas' stories of niggas who broke up with their girls 
because they went on, you know, they took uh-huh. those pictures uh-huh. and it went a little wild. Uh-huh. But they saying you insecure if that make you feel away. I'm not really into women that's gonna pay large amounts to go see celebrities, anyways. Yeah, that's next level. Like my bitch talking about, like I, I'm gonna go a meet and greet. I get it, but a stack in the grand scheme of things, the people who paying that stack probably ain't got hella stacks. You know what I'm saying? That's another part of it, right? So it's like, like bitch, I told you I was laying on my corner. I need help, right? So you want to go see Chris Brown? Yeah, I'm cool. Don't grab my don't grab my bitch ass, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not there for that. And I'm cool with the picture. Like, I, I could probably see it. All right, go ahead. This, like, yo, person, whatever, whatever. But, nigga, he be picking bitches up, all type of shit. Man. I mean, the 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 biggest one, the, the defense that I would have would just be, like, damn, how would you feel if I was with Beyonce and she was bent over, like, twerking on me, like, for the pick? They would go crazy, bro. Yeah. They would go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a woman, and I'm just using her right now. I mean, there's plenty of badder women out, like, you know what I'm saying? Some baddies out there, and pick one. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying Chris Brown is at a, yeah, Chris Brown is at a certain level, so I just chose her because she's at a high level. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it would be up or motherfuckers be like, oh, he ain't, you know, he about to get married tomorrow. Look what he doing in that picture with Beyonce. For sure. yeah. You would be crucified on Shade Room and whatever else they be on. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Like, the pick is cool. If you want to. Yeah, I'm cool with it. You grew up listening to. Take Your a friend pick. bought the ticket, just want you to go with her. Take a pick with the nigga, like, but then he ain't going to do nothing that you ain't asking to do. Thanks. Exactly. So, if he, if you going to do that off the, pay, the, you know, the one stack that you pay. Let that nigga be like, you know what I mean? You a vibe. Come to the crib. Mm. Now, I don't know what the fuck you about to do. Smoke your bitch. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, the double standard got to go. It's crazy. You know, we love black women here. We love women, period. Uh, but something that's really, like, just bothering me, man, is, like, that whole accountability thing is a real issue. It's crazy. It's a real, real freaking issue. Like, we just, you know, I see posts every day talking about oh and it's a good one black man we just we just want to see y'all get it together we need y'all you know what i mean like still a little like crazy right 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 but okay cool it's better than some of the other shit i see right Mm -hmm. right it still had me like okay bitch (laughs) but in the day i get what you're saying but in the same breath like i think the lack of accountability is really killing us right now as a community man from from our women though like we just need accountability from y'all I'll admit, I'm going to take accountability. I do it every time. I'm open. I'm honest about my shit, no matter how weird it might be to people, whatever the fuck it is. Like, if I make a mistake, I'm going to say it. Okay, cool. I made one. I'm not perfect. Uh, So I'm just speaking, just being from a transparent, as a transparent person, man. Just like, I'm going to be accountable for the mistakes that I make. I'm going to be accountable for... The hearts that I broke, let's go there. Okay. I can be accountable for the things that I might have lacked in mm-hmm. that a woman might have needed from me. Mm. Okay? There we go. Yeah. But I guarantee right now, even if this is posted on our reel, that you'll never find another reel like this of a woman saying this. Damn. Unless she's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Shoot at them, Zay. Shoot at them, bitches. Uh, so I'm not even shooting. I don't really care about shooting. I just care about. If you run across me, I ain't even speaking for nobody else sitting here with me or in this whole building. If you see me, Zay is a nigga that's going to hold you accountable, period. That's me. I'm going to hold women accountable. I ain't going to be no, I ain't no simp towards no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you wrong on something, then you wrong on something. But also, Zay got tacked. You know what I mean? I'm also becoming way more emotional awareness. I got way, I got, a, I got a better way of approaching certain things and conversations with women. Mm-hmm. So just because I know how to manage you, don't think just I'm accepting you. Cause that's another thing women to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, he cool. Like I said, cool. Like he, he's emotional aware. Let's say on some bullshit. Like, yeah, he's a, yeah, nah, he ain't, but you really woke. You know what it is. Zay is an emotionally, Mature person. I'm going to be able to talk to you about that shit. Talk to yourself period. a third person. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So if you know me, that's what it is. But at the same time, if I see you operating that way, even if you operate with me in a good way, if you operate with other people around you in a certain way, and I see, mm-hmm. you know, there ain't that maturity and that accountability, mm-hmm. like, don't holler at me. I'm cool. They be, they be acting. Cool. They be actors. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm cool. They be actors. They'll act with you. But you, you know what I mean? I'm cool. Yeah. So, like, you can tell that. 
Now, sometimes, nah, sometimes accountability yeah. takes a while to really come out. Like I said, because you're like that with me because honestly, I'm just talking about like a honeymoon phase, but I was trying to keep it out of even just like a relationship, just me and women in general, because this can happen. Yeah. And if I'm out with just a friend and she do something, and she won't take accountability for it. No, that's fine. And I'll just listen to how she's talking about it, or I'll listen to how women talk with their friends on the phone. And then you got the girls, you know, backing them in it. There's no accountability in the entire circle. I'm just saying, I might not even say nothing there, but just know I peeped it and Ooh. I observed it. Ooh. So if you're looking at a nigga like me as a husband, maybe you're not, whatever you are, just know mm -hmm. I'm that type of nigga that might see it. But if you're not aware of your accountability, yeah. I'm cool. I don't bitch. even want to choose my friend. Leave that circle, come to this circle, bitch. Don't do Say that. Yeah. Wait, wait. You're always welcome. Always welcome. So, come over here and take accountability. Bring a friend. <laughs> we'll teach you how to take it. You gotta say that. We got the accountability course right now. All right, uh, this is my last topic I got. Um... Y'all know what uh, Project 2025 is? Nah, I heard of it, but... So that's Trump's... Uh, like, that's his canon... They're calling it the Trump presidency wish list explained. Um, I don't really care about politics at all. I don't. I'm just one of them niggas. That nigga about to win again. He is, for sure. But that's crazy. here's the thing. I just need to... This is more so of a warning at this point. His first presidency, I really didn't give a fuck. I think... <laughs> It was probably a good thing that nigga went into the presidency because so much was exposed and we saw it. It's preparing us to, for what's about to happen now, y'all. I'm telling y'all, period. You know, if we didn't see it, it's just going to be sneakier. They was always going to get their plan off one way or another. Mm -hmm. But there is a generation of us that are now have lived through it. We lived through the Trump pregnant, uh, pregnancy. Uh, presidency <laughs> and we live through <laughs> nigga five months uh, <laughs> you know and also this Biden one right uh, so they, they they agenda have all has always been the same bro um, but this project 2025 stood out to me because I was having a conversation with with uh, my daughter's mom and she was just like she's you know she's one of them you gotta vote you better vote you know what I'm saying? I'm going to judge you if you don't. You ain't a real human being if you don't judge type people, right? Mm. I was like, man, fuck voting. <laughs> like, I ain't voting. Mm. What my vote going to do on the federal level? Fuck voting. You know what I mean? Like, let me see a couple gangsters put a council together. I'll go there and vote for the leader of that shit or something. You know what I mean? But uh, all the other shit, I really don't give a fuck. But I do pay attention because it's good to know what's coming at you. You know what I mean? Just because you are aware of the politics don't mean you got to necessarily be a fucking political incumbent or some shit, right? You know what I mean? Have debates. But she said, you should look at Project 25 and mm -hmm. just tell me what you think. And I was like, all right, I'll look into it and see what it's about. So, like I said, Project 25 is the uh, Trump's presidency wish list, okay? Um... First of all, for the government, they got a few things. Uh, they actually call it, uh, what they call that shit? It's uh, 900 pages. 900 pages, y'all. Um, it was put the, together by a think tank, and it's a strategy. The project. Trump, Trump got a good ass team around him. No, yeah, he, yeah. You know I, mean? I ain't mm -hmm. gonna hold you. Yep, he do, man. Uh, Heritage says Project 2025 was written by several former Trump appointees and reflects input from more than 100 conservative organizations. That's the first red flag. There's a lot of conservative organizations that we all are tied to and we are embedded with. And a lot of their marketing is not very conservative. They're making money. You don't know. When they say these motherfuckers are getting billion dollars for their campaign trails, who the fuck you think they're coming from? Mm -hmm. They're not coming from the Joe Schmoes. They're coming from these motherfuckers that got hella money. they CEOs of these big corporations. Mm -hmm. So hundreds, just imagine. And I'm just trying to paint the picture. Hundreds of the greatest, biggest companies out there that are with the agenda put this together. Okay? So one of the things they're doing in the government is uh, the Project 2025 proposes that the entire federal bu bureaucracy, including independent agencies such as the Department of Justice, be placed under direct presidential control, a controversial idea known as unitary executive theory. That's crazy. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, in practice, that would streamline decision-making, allowing the president to directly implement policies and directly